In today's Abandon video, we are heading inside the historic abandoned Station Hotel, located in Western Scotland. The building has been left with everything still inside. After turning away customers from 2014, the hotel's demise could not have been any more apparent with so much deterioration happening to the structure that it has been covered by a protective layer to prevent debris falling on passerbys. Join us as we find our way within the Vale to discover what the property looks like nowadays. Remember to click subscribe and press the notification bell to never miss a video. Last time we asked our viewers for their renovation ideas towards the mansion we explored in the video. We had some unique replies but this comment from Matt stood out as he believes the building would make an ideal creative studio due to the peaceful surroundings and isolation of the property, meaning that writers could use the house to come up with exciting scripts for plays and films. Our following question in relation to today's video is one we get asked all the time, so we want to hear your thoughts. Do you think that, in terms of abandonments like the hotel, homeless people should be allowed to stay in the available beds of a recently closed structure? What is visible of the Victorian Hotel today externally is very impressive. The building stands above most nearby structures with multiple towers and the date of construction is easily noticeable from the architecture. It opened in air in 1866 by the railway line it bordered, with over 70 bedrooms, each with ensuite bathrooms, as well as many function spaces and restaurants. To this day it remains the most famous and oldest hotel in the town and is beloved by the locals. After spending so much time as a monument for the area, in 2018 the structure was covered in a white veil in order to protect the station from falling debris from its dangerous condition. Most of the structure tragically won't be seen for a long time, kept hidden by the sheeting. Starting on the top floor of this grand hotel. Everything's furnished and there's still a lot of furniture inside as well. Although it's quite trashed, considering how I've seen it prior. Some beds have gone missing, but maybe that was done just after it closed. Can't really be too sure when you only have a few resources that show inside pictures. As the central town surroundings of the hotel are highly populated throughout the day, we used our usual strategy of moving from highest point to lowest point whilst exploring, just in case someone entered to try to find us. The floor is so soft here, I need to be careful where I step, because it's carpet, you don't really know what's underneath. Jesus Christ, it isn't raining outside, think about that. Most of the bedrooms were left untouched with the beds made. Each room was accompanied with the expected clothes hangers, a bible, TV and a telephone for its visitors. Here's one of the bathrooms of the hotel, with complimentary shower gel still in place. This gold banister. Wow. It's like the central lift shaft of the staircase. You can tell this place is, is old. I think this is the staircase I'm going to use. It's going to take us onto the floors below. Over the structure's century in use, all of its original Victorian details survived, such as the old fashioned lift, ornate banister, and corridor arches. This one looks really intact. Two beds. A couple drawers, wardrobe, and a TV with the remote beside it. 
This one has a shower curtain as well, so maybe a bit of a better room than the one I showed above. This one is perfectly kept. Number 219. Even the bed was made, kind of. Well, at least the duvet was stripped, probably after the last uh, users slept here. With the scaffolding outside audibly shaking in the wind, we progressed downwards to the point where we would hopefully find other spaces than bedrooms. Each level down we went, the architecture kept improving to a royal standard. chandeliers. <laughs> Holy shit. The architecture's cool but it's well and truly scrapped of any wires from the ceiling. detail on this lift car. The inside isn't exactly as grand but it's tiny actually. I'm sure no more than like two people in their suitcases could fit in here. Some grotty looking toilets in there. I really like this red and white wallpaper. I feel like it's quite classic in a hotel. Office. Here's where all the other paintings went. So many documents and whatnot. Business bulletin, invoices. Wow, <laughs> the ceiling would have been like a restaurant, quite plush with nice, comfy chairs. I can see a flat screen on the wall as well. Look at these tables. Got little statues on them. Almost like the front of a ship. That's kind of what it reminds me of. This was the main bar for the hotel, and definitely the grandest out of the three. The contrast between extreme decay on the ground and the furniture set up as if the inhabitants left yesterday was bizarre, and something we rarely see in the UK. I'm manoeuvring my way around with these chairs to get behind the bar. Holy shit, the floor. I can't even describe how that felt, but it wasn't good. As if I was on a bouncy castle. Here's what remains of the kegs anyway. Carlin, etc. You know the drill. This corridor is pretty much perfect. The coves around the doors have these intricate architecture. The floor is covered in rubble from the ceiling, which is just decaying, but still has its grand aesthetic. Aaron Sweet. Oh my god. This one is in much better condition than the other. Chairs and tables are still set up how they were. Wow, 
And again, the ceiling is really impressive. Just notice that every table has a candle on it. Kind of shows the date this place was in use. Still quite cool though. I wouldn't mind eating by candlelight. How many glasses are on here? It's like food storage. There's a huge refrigerator behind me. Here's the kitchen. Oh my god, it stinks. As goes with this place, I guess. They left everything inside, which is good for us. But not when you're in the kitchen. Because it smells terrible. During the hotel's period in use, it switched owners numerous times, belonging to companies such as Stakis, Quality and Swallow Hotels. All in all, it would begin to turn away customers in 2014, probably due to the cost of the outdated building's maintenance, and finally shut its doors in 2015. This must be where the kitchen leads into yet another restaurant. Oh my god. Again with an amazing ceiling, but seemingly tackier chairs. That's four restaurants if I'm counting right. Following closure of the premises and the neglectful treatment the historic hotel has received, various campaigns have been launched to attempt to save it before it's too late. As a result of this, the property became B-listed and is on the register as a building at risk. It's going to take us to the ground floor. And probably where the grand staircase ends. Doubt the lift would go any lower than this as well. There's nice marble walls. This is the revolving door, this is actually the exit and the entrance. Doesn't even seem to be any locks on it, to be honest. But it's well sealed off from the hoarding outside. Station bar under 25. Be prepared to show ID. Holy shit. Oh my god, it's fucked in here. The entire ceiling's collapsing and there is so much water damage. I think this is directly under the point at the top floor where I was talking about the water damage and I was saying about it's raining in the building. This is the ground floor and this is the effect just water has. That is crazy. It's a grand frame. There's a lot more deterioration down here. Looks like a big room. Yeah, exactly that. I bet they would have had discos in here. The levels of deterioration on the lower floors was shocking, especially as from what we had heard, measures were going ahead to cease extensive damage inside the hotel. It seems that the only treatment the building has had was to protect its external appearance, whilst the internal regions are suffering. That is an old sign. It's an old reception with the wooden desk. Down.
We had a what's on board on the left. So much left in reception. Looking for a key safe, but maybe it was kept somewhere else. It was over 300 rooms, so maybe a, a room itself was dedicated to keeping all the keys. Whether this is blurred or not, this is the type of thing that really needs to be saved. It's just a, a painting of the hotel outside with no scaffolding and whatever on it in a really grand frame and they've just left it inside. This could go anywhere in the city and people would like it, especially if they had memories of the hotel. After wandering through the shuttered rooms and corridors of the site for a few hours, it was time for us to exit and be on our way. We hope you enjoyed our showcase of the hotel. If you did, feel free to like the video and subscribe to never miss a future upload. Here are some of our photographs taken at the abandoned hotel. If you like the look of them, check out our Instagram page in the description where we post images of our explorers months before they are seen on YouTube. Thanks for watching. This video was recorded during a lengthy trip to Scotland we endured in the summer. We have countless more to share from that trip and others, so be on the lookout for them. See you next time.